Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, make sure you hit the, what should they do? Hit the subscribe button. Can you hit, say? Hit the subscribe button. And then what? Hit the bell? Hit the bell. <laughs> Whose birthday is it today? My birthday. How old are you? Five. So and I'm five right now. Yep, you're five right now. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna let Lane pick out the colors for our makeover. So we are going to do this chest right here. Don't worry guys, it is a, it's not an antique, it's not even vintage. It's a reproduction, so don't worry. We stripped the top off, but I'm gonna let him pick the colors for this and I'm gonna work with it. So it's a challenge, right? Are you gonna challenge me? Yeah. What colors do you think you're gonna pick? <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna do some blending and fun and make this boho and colorful. And happy birthday, Lane! Happy birthday! All right, guys, let's get started. Say bye! Bye! I decided I wanted to strip down the top of this piece because I want to expose the pretty wood grain that is underneath this really thick factory finish. And so I am taking a chemical stripper and I am going to first apply that. It is a veneer, and so that is why I do a chemical stripper first because I want to get as much of the finish off as possible. This looks so cool. This is like the most satisfying part of that. And then I take my plastic scraper that has a scoop and I'm going to scrape the finish off and this will get a lot of the finish off before I go in with the sander and this will minimize the chances of me blowing through the veneer. And so if you are not comfortable with doing this or refinishing veneer, I always suggest doing a chemical stripper and then doing a sand afterwards. That's how I do it. You can figure out what's best for you, but that's what I have found has worked best. So again, I'm taking a chemical stripper, putting it on, letting it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. Then I'm going to scrape it off with my plastic scraper. Once that is done, I am going to neutralize this chemical stripper with mineral spirits. That's going to help neutralize it. It's going to stop the process of the stripper and it's going to clean off any residue and then I allow this to fully dry. It was pretty humid here so I let it sit overnight so that the top of this was completely dry before I went in with a sander and I'm going to sand the top of this. I started with a 120 grit and then I went to a 220 grit. I am not going to be staining this. I will put a polycrylic over top of this just to use the natural wood. So I'm going to go in with a 220 grit to smooth everything out so that way when I do put a poly over it, it's already a nice smooth finish. Before I paint this, I'm going to remove all the hardware. I'm going to clean it really well. I use a TSP base cleaner by Dixie Bell called White Lightning. And then I'm going to scuff sand this. This has a shiny finish on it. And so I'm not going to get crazy. I don't need a primer with the kind of paint I'm using. So I am going to scuff sand it. And people always ask me, what does scuff sand mean? And so I am going to, I took a video of the drawer front so you could see what I was talking about. You can see right here, it's still glossy. But when you go over it with a high grit sandpaper, you're just scuffing that shine off. So you can see that the shine, it's more matte now. So that's what you're trying to do. You're not trying to get crazy and sand the whole finish off. You just want to do a scuff to where you get that shiny off. I get a lot of flack for painting furniture and I wanted to show you how you can tell something's a reproduction. So this handle has a fake nail in it. A lot of old furniture, a lot of antique has nails in the hardware. Also, what you want to look at is you want to look for symmetry. If something is super symmetrical, that means it's a reproduction. Because if someone made it with their hands, there would not be this much symmetry. No human can make things perfect. So you see how both sides of that little thing is, are symmetrical, even the front, all the carvings, everything is super symmetrical. That tells me that a machine did it. A reproduction is basically that. It's a reproduction, a company with a machine makes things look like they were antiques. This is not something that's worth a bunch of money. Also, they used to use a bunch of different wood. This is all the same wood. That's cherry for the drawer slides, cherry on the inside. That's another telltale sign if the piece is made of all the same kind of wood. This has fake patina painted on it. That's not real. So a lot of companies, they make things look like they're older than they are. Also, this is the last part. If you can put 
all the drawers, I put a piece of tape on it. So if you're going to rewatch this, focus on the purple drawer. I can put that drawer in every single one of those slots. That is not something that you can do with handmade antique furniture. Okay. So again, that's symmetry. And that means that it is not a real antique. So now that I've told you that, we're going to go in and we're going to paint it. So I am using Dixie Belle's Mermaid Tail, and I'm going to put two coats of a base coat of this first. This video is going to show you how to really perfect your blending if you're a beginner, what you really need to do, and how you can really practice your skills and what you need to, what you need to be able to practice your skills. So you need to put a base coat down first. That will help so that when you do your blending, it doesn't go down to the wood finish. I do two coats of a base color, which will be mermaid tail for this, and you wanna make sure it is completely dry before you go in. You need a mister bottle. You're going to want a rag or a paper towel. You're gonna to want a brush. This is a clean, dry, neutral brush, and you're going on a paint brush for each color. You need to use colors that are very similar. So that was Pure Ocean, that's Mermaid Tail, and the other one's Peacock. It is the same color family. They're super close to each other. Even though you may want something more dramatic, if you're a beginner, you really need to start with stuff that is very close to each other. So I'm taking the Peacock and I am going to outline this drawer that was painted in Mermaid Tail. This is going to be my darker color, okay? So this is gonna be my shading. I'm going to outline the entire drawer front with the peacock and that will, it, it, if you, it's too dry so it's been super humid here so you're not going to see me spritz it that much in this point. If your brush is catching, you want to make sure you missed it, but you don't want to sit there and douse the drawer front with water. You just want to do a light mist so that you can keep your paint moving and it doesn't get caught up. So that's one thing you need to remember. Do not use too much water. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Pure Ocean, which is the lighter color, which would be our highlight, and I am gonna overlap that over the peacock, okay? So I'm gonna put that lighter color over the peacock, and that is going to act as a highlight, and it's gonna give us some more dimension. The center piece is going to be Mermaid Tail. So I'm gonna finish overlapping the peacock with the pure ocean and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the mermaid tail in the center and I'm going to overlap the pure ocean with that okay so now we have three layers of paint the paint is all still wet okay so you don't want to do the peacock and walk away and let it dry you want to do the peacock and then you want to do the pure ocean right away and then you want to do the mermaid tail right away we're gonna mist it like you can see me doing right here and we're gonna take that clean dry neutral brush and we're just gonna do circles. You're gonna go horizontal, you're gonna go up and down and this is going to give you a really nice blend which is great for a beginner because you need to practice your light hand, you need to practice layering the paint, getting the right amount of moisture before you go in and start trying to blend more bold colors, colors that really aren't in the same color family. If you want to make a color darker, you can go and just kind of lightly add. So I'm lightly adding mermaid tail and then I'm going to go back in with my clean dry neutral brush and I'm just going to feather that into there. It's a really, it. the thing is, is blending is not hard. You just really need to practice. So I'm going to do the same thing on this drawer front. I'm not gonna talk, I'm gonna let you listen to some music. I am not gonna fast forward it, so it's gonna take a few minutes and you can just see exactly what I do without me jabber jawing. <laughs>
it's going to be the same concept on the side of the piece. You're going to mist it and then you're going to outline it with your peacock, overlap it with the pure ocean, and then put your mermaid tail in the middle. Do your circles, horizontal, vertical, same exact concept. You're going to want, the way that I'm placing this paint though, is that I'm trying to place the peacock anywhere where I want a shaded area and then Obviously, I'm going to overlap the pure ocean over that, and then the center is going to be our mermaid tail to keep with the theme of the front of it. So same exact concept, and then also I pull all the drawers out, and I'm going to do the same thing on the frame, and I'll show you that as well. So just sit back and watch, and just remember the things that I told you. It's the same exact thing on the front, the side, the frame. It's, it's the same. Lane picked a couple colors. He picked Lucky Lavender and he picked Peony for us to add onto this piece. So I thought, let's use this paint and we're gonna use it as almost kind of like a little bit of a wash. So I'm taking the Lucky Lavender and I'm gonna put it in the recessed areas on the front of the drawers. And this is going to kind of give it a little bit more of a colorful look. So I'm just using cheap chip brushes for this. You don't need anything crazy or fancy. There is a few little carvings and details on this piece. So that's what we're going to be doing with it. You're going to take the Lucky Lavender, try to get it in all the cracks and crevices. Take your mister bottle, mist it, and pull it back with your rag. This is a shop towel that I'm working with. But you can use a microfiber cloth whatever works for you. And you're going to just lightly pull it back, mist it a little bit, pull it back. Kind of like if you were waxing or glazing, I'm using the paint in the same exact way, except we just want it to be in all of the carvings. Now 
I'm going to allow that Lucky Lavender to dry for a few minutes and then I'm going to go in with my peony and overlap some areas, not the whole thing. So we're going to add a little bit of dimension. There's going to be some Lucky Lavender, there's going to be some Lucky Lavender and peony mix, there's going to be some peony, and I'm just going to kind of dab it in certain areas. And this is just going to add even more dimension to that color that we're doing. And we're going to wipe that back the same exact way that we w wiped back the Lucky Lavender. Next, I'm going to take some peacock and I am going to just kind of put it in there and dry brush it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just doing a light dry brush over everything and this is going to kind of make the color a little bit more purple, blend it in a little bit more so it's a l more subtle and it's just going to bring everything together. So use a light hand. This is like just a dry brush. It's not anything crazy and it's just going to bring everything together. I will seal the entire piece with Dixie Belle's Easy Peasy Spray Wax. You want to spray this on the entire piece, take a rag and rub it in. I am also going to be using some black wax around the edges of the drawer so that I can deepen the color. And so this also acts as a barrier so that that wax does not soak into the paint as much because all I want to do is just add a little bit of a shading to it. I don't want this black wax to soak in there. And so putting a clear wax down first will allow you to wipe back the colored wax a little bit better. So I'm just going to add some of that black wax around the edges and then I'm going to wipe it back with a microfiber cloth. And you can, if it's too dark, you can take that easy peasy spray wax and you can do a light spritz. So what I, you'll see me do is I'm going to do, after I wipe this back, I'm going to do a light spritz in the center just to remove any of that dark wax so that it stays bright. And that will help to lighten up that wax again as well. So I just wanted this to be a little bit darker on the edges. The last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of copper gilding wax, which is an oil-based wax, onto the hardware just to add a little bit pop of color shimmer. And then I'm going to lightly add it onto the carvings on this piece just to kind of add another layer of dimension, not anything crazy. But you'll see here it does add a little bit more character to this hardware and it is oil-based. So once it dries, it's self-sealing. You don't have to do anything else with it. Okay, I lied. One more thing. I'm sealing the top of this with Gator Hide, which is a polycrylic. This is not stained. This was stripped and sanded down. And so this is the natural wood of the veneer. It is a cherry and I'm going to put a layer of polycrylic down. This is going to look super pretty. Look at the difference. I had to show this to you. So over to the left, it is not sealed and the right is sealed. And just look at how pretty that looks. And that's it, guys. This piece is donezo. Boom. Okay, everybody, this video is done. This piece is done. 
Yesterday was my son's birthday. Tomorrow is my daughter's birthday. They're exactly four years apart. So I hope you enjoyed this video. He did pick some of the colors. We went with some blues and some purple and some, you know, pink and it worked out, I think. It looks really cute. So if you are not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the bell. You'll get all the latest videos. Everything I use will be in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have an amazing weekend and I will see you guys next week. Happy creating and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty